But you have to look at the substance. Whether the return that you're receiving is the time, is the consideration for the time value of money and the credit risk premium. If yes, then in substance, it is an interest. And it meets the conditions for amortized cost accounting. And therefore, it will continue to be carried at amortized cost as presently carried by the Islamic banks. So the accounting standard has to be interpreted in the substance, not just based on the terms. Uh, because if you start doing it, it will be extremely, I think it will be then impractical to apply any standard on the Islamic banks. But in any case, regarding this technical uh, observation that Kyber and Reset, actually the, what, is, uh, uh, what is mentioned there is that, if a, for example, if, the, uh, if you have a loan where the Kyber is reset after th every three months, based on the average Kyber for the last three months, it is fine. But if you, based on the average Kyber for the last three months, you're fixing the interest rate for the next one year, so then it is exactly not the consideration for time value of money because you are using an interest rate which is based on last three months and you are applying it and fixing it for the next one year. So it is it's different from the time value of money. So that is the, that kind of technical aspects can be looked into and various application guidance would be issued. But you know, broadly speaking, uh, just because the interest uh, in Islamic modes is prohibited, it does not mean that IFRS 9 application would also be uh, you know, not possible. Okay, so I think if the question answer is over, then I, I would like to take you to a more, another imp interesting debate like fair value on the loan loss provisioning, on the credit loss provisioning, uh, which is normally more uh, relevant for banks and financial institutions. And, you know, that is a fundamental change which is happening in the way we account for loan loss provisions in banks and financial st institutions. Now, at the moment, now, this is a background. I just wanted to skip the background because there was a financial crisis advisory group which made recommendations to the ISB and US FASB to improve the accounting standards. And as a result of that recommendation, they have issued this exposure draft on an expected loss model for loan loss provisioning. So that is a background because in the interest of time and just wanted to cut down on the background, I just wanted to take you to what is being discussed and what are the key proposals as to how the loan loss provisioning and credit loss provisioning should be done as compared to how it is happening now. Now, at the moment, you know, what is happening is we are using an, IS39 uses an incurred loss model. Now, what we do is for a, with a loan, uh, if it is a loan, we recognize all the contractual interest payments over time of the loan in the PNL account over the term of the loan. And then if the loan defaults, so in the period the default occurs or the objective evidence of impairment occurs, in that particular year, the credit loss is booked. So what will happen in, for example, in a five-year loan, so in first three years, you'll book full interest. In the fourth year, if there is a credit loss impairment, you have to take that credit loss impairment into the PNL account. Now, this, on an overall basis, this will disturb the return, effective return on the loan, because in initial years, the return would be higher, and in the year where you've taken a credit loss uh, hit, the return might go to negative sometimes. And then, as for all loans, there is always an inherent risk of uh, loan loss. So the debate was that why to wait till the time the actual trigger event or credit default takes place. Why not incorporate that loan loss provisions from the very inception of entering into the contract? The day you enter into the contract, why not incorporate that risk aspect into the loan loss accounting? And therefore, an expert expected loss model was developed. And this, what is this expected loss model? which is basically the subject matter of the exposure draft. The expected loss model says that your provisioning against loan losses should be forward looking, should not only wait the time till the credit loss or the default actually occurs, but should be spread over the term of the loan through some systematic manner. Now to explain it very simply, what they're saying is if you have a loan of say one billion, 
and your interest income on that loan is say 300 million over the term of loan, five years, and your expected credit loss on that loan is say 50 million. So the total net return on that loan, 300 million minus 50 is 250. That 250 should be spread over the life of the loan and that 250 which is net of credit loss should be recognized as an interest income over the term of the loan rather than you recognizing interest, full interest in the initial period and then recognizing a credit loss impairment at the time when the credit loss actually incurs. Now, as you can see, this is moving away from the fundamental concept of accounting that losses and expenses should be booked in the period in which they are incurred rather than future expenses, future losses should not be booked in advance. But since there is a lot of push from the regulators around the world that loan loss provisioning should be forward looking, should not wait till the time as it happened in the crisis that uh, one day a credit uh, a loss impairment is so huge that it will disturb the whole earning pattern. Now we can debate to what extent this earning smoothening exercise is logical in the context of the framework of accounting that we are operating. But yes, this is also a reality that uh, is the regulators around the world have been able to convince the ISB and US FASB to look at this expected loss model, which says that credit loss should be recognized as part of your effective interest income over the term of the loan. So effectively, each year, you allocate a portion of your interest income to a special account, an allowance account, so that that allowance account can take care of future credit losses. Now, in very simply, uh, I can say this is somewhat like a journal provisioning, which used to happen you know, in some countries. Uh, other than specific provisioning, a journal provisioning allowance is created so that it can take care of future loan losses. So that is something which IESB is also proposing that each year, you allocate a certain portion of your interest income to an allowance account so that that allowance account can be used for future credit impairment. Now, when we do that, the situation might become complex. For example, in one year, you have one expectation about the core credit loss. In the next year, you have a different expectation about the credit loss. Now, how this allowance account would change each year depending on the future expectation about the credit losses. First of all, itself, to determine what will be the expected credit loss on a loan is very, very subjective. Uh, various methodologies can be applied, historical loss experience of an entity, industry data, extrapolation, what not. So this will create a lot of subjectivity in what is expected as a credit loss on a loan or a portfolio of loan. The standard has prescribed certain methodologies, but there is a white, uh, I think uh, I have also this, uh, I'm skipping this example, but uh, this example you can always see while you have a, uh, because you will have a copy of this presentation. But I think this is on the same lines as I explained that the credit expected loss is, should be sp spread as part of your effective interest income or the term of the loan. So for example, if you have a loan, say, take this, okay. Under the incurred loss model, if you have a loan of say, one lakh rupees over a period of five years, and the interest income or the contractual installment amount is 25,000 per month, meaning 125,000 over the years, the expected credit loss is say, rupees 3,000 in year three and 7,000 in year four. So 25,000 is a total interest income that you'll earn over the term of the loan. 10,000 is a credit loss that you expect. Now, if you use the incurred loss model and you've plot those cash flows, 125,000 is a total cash flow over the term of the loan. And this will give you a effective return of 7.93% using the effective interest rate method per annum without any credit losses. This is the present way we are accounting for interest income. Now, if in the year three and four, the PNL effect would be that you, you continue accounting for interest income at 7.93% in one year, second year, and third year. In the third year, when the credit loss actually takes place, uh, 